This is The Close-Up, conversations about creativity. From our studios in Los Angeles, here is Jim Chapin. Welcome to The Close-Up. Hanno Bassi is Chief Technology Officer for Fox Filmed Entertainment in Los Angeles. In that capacity, he directs the studio's strategic development of the next generation of entertainment and distribution platforms. He also serves as president of the UHD Alliance, an industry trade association created to advance ultra-high definition television and other content. Welcome, Hanno. Thanks for having me, Jim. In, in your capacity as CTO at Fox, you are on the cutting edge of seeing all the new technologies, yeah. uh, high frame rate, uh, high dynamic range, color gamut, 4K. Um, of all of those technologies, which are the ones that excite you the, the most? Well, Jim, I would say it's actually all of them um, because, you know, for years we've been looking how to improve the um, entertainment experience for consumers. And um, we've realized that one piece or the other in and of itself won't really uh, um, make as much of a difference as we would like. That's why we're coming up with a new format and with a new entertainment experience that kind of encompasses all of those. Uh, and so it's really more of a toolbox that our creative community can use to, you know, create the best experiences that they, that they can well, with, when, with those tools. When Star Wars was uh, f first out, it was a Fox movie. Yeah. Avatar and James yeah. Cameron is a Fox director and yeah. he's always uh, breaking the barriers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of talk and going to be a lot more talk about UHD. Yeah. Uh, how do you define in simple terms what UHD means? Yeah, so UHD, obviously the letters stand for ultra high uh, definition. And where that started in the consumer electronics industry was really, the, it was all about increasing resolution. So you go from the HD resolution, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels to four times the resolution. That's also why very often you hear the term 4K, uh, kind of equivalent to Ultra HD. But I think we actually like Ultra HD now better because it uh, implies more than just increasing the resolution. Because what we found is that if you just increase the resolution by itself, that gives a little bit of, a, a, of an advantage, but, but especially for motion picture content, especially uh, content that's recorded at uh, 24 frames per second, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about HFR as well, the, the increase in resolution isn't all that visible. You have issues with uh, aliasing and, and, and motion blur and, and, and all that, and which just kind of diminish a little bit the, the, the advantage of just more resolution. Also, in order to really appreciate the higher resolution, you need a fairly large screen in your home, and the, there's a natural limit around the world with how, how big TVs can, can become. Typical uh, consumer flat screen puts out about uh, right now in a range, about how many nits of light? Um, so the, the, there's a standard that we use uh, to um, uh, grade our, our motion picture, picture content today for, for home entertainment uh, that actually is using 100 nits, but we shouldn't forget that that standard also isn't all that new. Uh, so we've been working with that for a long time. That's an ETU recommended practice, ITU, sorry, recommended practice. Um, but now when we're talking about high dynamic range, which is I think what that's where you're leading, uh, that, that is gonna be at least 10 times as bright, if not brighter. And it's not just that the, the, the bright level, brightness level is going up, it's also that the, the, the dark areas in the scene, the, the black level is also going down dramatically. So, so someone at Disney told me that in a, in a screening room, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that when they're looking at something in outer space, space is deep, deep black. Yep. It's an absence of light. Yep. It's That's dark right. and foreboding. And that the stars twinkle yeah. with a diversity of colors yeah. that otherwise yeah. uh, would not be noticeable, but compared to the black backdrop in high dynamic range, space is truly exciting Absolutely. in a way it wasn't before. Yeah. Uh, uh, the directors really love uh, uh, ultra high def. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do they see in that that uh, that makes them uh, so excited about working in it? So, so again, it's it's not so much ultra high def as far as better resolution is concerned. It's really the the, the bigger canvas as a whole, and I'm saying not just the the geometrical aspects of it, but also the color depth and 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 the dynamic range that we're talking about. And 
uh, all creatives, everybody that we've worked with so far, they've all loved it. Uh, we've had comments um, from A-list directors saying, this is so fantastic. The experience that changed my mind was to see a side-by-side -side comparison. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, at uh, a trade show and mm -hmm. walking up to the booth. Mm -hmm. I could see from 100 feet That's right. that the monitor on the right, the picture on the right, was light years Wait, better right. than the one on the left. Yeah. And it turned out yeah. that was UHD and yeah. the other was uh, just right. a standard flat screen. Right, right, right. So it seems that the, the consumers are going to notice it immediately. Yeah, that, that's clearly the goal. Uh, and that was the concern originally when we just have talked about 4K resolution and nothing else, that we really create an experience that's easily understood by the consumer and appreciated. So and, uh, when will, uh, uh, the holidays are coming up. Uh, yeah. This past few weeks, the, every studio has announced mm -hmm. uh, uh, ultra high definition yeah. uh, titles. Yeah. Um, how does the consumer um, know in, in, in going to, to buy what to be looking for yeah. um, in order to make sure that they get something that is at your standards. Yes, so that, and that's the purpose of the UHD Alliance that you mentioned earlier, uh, where we have major consumer electronics manufacturers as well as uh, all the studios uh, practically are represented there, uh, distributors, technology companies uh, from around the world uh, actually where we're trying to address that problem. We're, because the, our market today is very fragmented. You have all these different devices and brands and, and they all have their own claims for quality and, and, and stuff like that and logos and branding and all that. And, and we need to simplify that for the consumer. But That's there is very likely to. going to be labeling to yes. be looking for, right, right. but if it has the right. UHD logo, right. uh, yeah. you're, you're on to a, a product that probably has superior performance. What mm -hmm. about Blu-ray? Uh, will Blu-ray uh, come along? Will yeah, yeah, so we're, we're talking about a logo and certification program for uh, devices as well as for content, and that is independent of the actual uh, distribution medium. So clearly, uh, you can have UHD Alliance uh, certified content on a Blu-ray disc, the next generation uh, Ultra HD Blu-ray disc, but there's other methods to do that as well. Every time there's a new technical opportunity, there are people who say, well, it, the picture looks fine now, yeah. uh, why should I spend the yeah. additional money? Yeah. Uh, but for this, there doesn't seem to be a lot of doubt, certainly at the studio level uh, and at the director, at the creative level, yeah. that this is where it's going. It's, it, this is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and w with a certainty that I don't recall hearing even for 3D or some of the other right. technologies yeah. where there is a full-on commitment by yeah. everyone yeah. that this is going to happen. So will we see this in broadcast television? We, are we going to see this in live sports? Where do you think beyond uh, a Blu-ray uh, yeah. home video, yeah. where, where am I going to see it? Um, well, what I would say to that, Jim, is that uh, clearly, and I think we all recognize this, that uh, uh, we can't really launch a new experience like this in just one uh, content category. So if it's just movies and nothing else, I think uh, it's going to be difficult to really establish that in the market. And that's why we're reaching out to, to uh, our colleagues that, that uh, handle sports content and, and others, and, and clearly we think there's a lot of value in that area as well. Um, because all the world all over, you know, our creatives, whether those are, you know, colorists or, or movie directors or, or uh, sports producers, we're all being limited by, you know, the, the, the medium that we currently can use. And, and even HD, even though it was a huge step forward, still has a lot of limitations. If I look at uh, our business, the, the motion picture business, there are a lot of limitations that uh, the 100 nits of brightness and, and also the, the, the 709 color space kind of bring with them. People constantly complain that they can't really make the sky, for example, the color that they want, or, or there's just not enough contrast or dynamic range in the image to really tell the story that they, the, the way they want. And, and I think what we're doing here is we're just increasing all dimensions of this canvas by, by a factor of 10 or more that, uh, that just allows so much more uh, creative freedom. There, the, uh, we should uh, explain to our audience that, that uh, some person said that the phone booth in London or the double-decker buses of London, that that color of red has never been properly captured in a motion picture. Mm -hmm. That, that um, 
uh, until now, there's one sky blue. There's one golf green green. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one red red, yeah. and it's kind of a fire engine yeah. red. Yeah. And that this will give you a uh, hundred uh, choices of red, a hundred, uh, an almost yeah. unlimited number of choices yeah. of the colors, which makes the entire picture look more uh, lifelike. What do you think high frame rate uh, does, uh, uh, that when you look at it, what does it do that, that you think uh, uh, improves a, uh, a creative series of choices. Yeah, uh, so HFR is another tool in the toolbox, I would say. It's probably the most controversial one that, we, that we're working on. Uh, the technical background is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you uh, shoot uh, 24 frames per second, the, the frame rate is just so low that you get, uh, as, as, as soon as an object moves through, through, um, through the frame or, or your camera moves, you, you just uh, create blur because, you know, by the time the frame is still exposed and the camera is moving fairly far in terms in relative terms that, 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 that this motion blurs out and so with a higher frame rate you don't have that issue anymore and uh, um, especially when we're talking about 3d so uh, Jim Cameron obviously been a significant proponent of, of high frame rate uh, these these issues get exacerbated the motion blur also the the, the judder if you've ever seen the camera kind of dulling along a fence and you, it all breaks apart, that's that's another issue and, and it gets exacerbated in 3D. So from a technical perspective, you want to address this problem by, by increasing the frame rate. It's trivial. Uh, it's been done in television for decades, uh, so not an, not an issue there. But the problem is an artistic one. Uh, what our, what our uh, creative um, community then complains about is that it doesn't look like a movie anymore. It looks more like a like a TV show, uh, like a, you know, a, a, a live broadcast, a, yeah. a, a live broadcast. Yeah. And, and that is an issue because on, on the one hand, you want the movie to be as realistic as possible, but at the same time, people associate this film look with the fact that they're being told a story right. as opposed to them watching a newscast. And uh, uh, so something that's actually uh, happening. And, and so that, that's, I think that's a discussion that we need to continue. I think what we're actually going to see is um, um, an adoption of, of what we call variable frame rate, where uh, in scenes where the, uh, the dramatic impact is most important, we'll probably drop back to the 24 frames per second that everybody is associating with, oh, I'm being told the story here. Whereas there's other scenes, um, outdoor, uh, flyovers, uh, stuff like that, where, where the, the higher frame rate makes a huge difference, but doesn't impact the, the storytelling aspect yeah. of, 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 of what you're seeing that much, uh, that you would ratchet up the, the frame rate for those scenes. I think that's what we're going to end up uh, seeing. There seems to be consensus in the, in the community. Talk about um, laser projection in theaters. Sure. There's a lot of excitement about yeah. it. Um, what do you think it brings to the theatrical experience mm -hmm. that we haven't had before? Yeah, the, the biggest issue that we have with, with theatrical exhibition is, is that the uh, images on screen are too dim. They're not bright enough, uh, especially in 3D, because all the 3D solutions that we have today, they all um, use filters and, and glasses and all that, and so you lose a lot of light through doing that, and, and laser really allows us to address that problem. So I think the, f the first step you're going to see with laser projection, and we've uh, shown it uh, uh, on several occasions now, is that you can get in 3D to the same 14-foot Lambert standards that people are used to in 2D. And is it the sense that with the scale, the number of units going out, that we're going to start seeing these affordably installed in, in theaters? I would hope so, but, but, uh, but, uh, but I would also uh, hope, and, and that's something that, that we're working on with the technical community, is a uh, to push it even further, to not stop by at 14 foot limbers, but also get uh, a solution for high dynamic range in the theater. Because that's what you really need. Right now, we're, we're obviously, there's a uh, huge push to implement uh, high dynamic range for home entertainment with direct view displays, but we also need a solution for, for projection, for, for theatrical distribution. Because at the end of the day, our filmmakers make movies for theatrical exhibition primarily, I mean, obviously they all know that there's a home entertainment uh, distribution coming afterwards, but uh, 
a lot of the creative focus goes into what does this movie going to look like in the theater. So from a UHD standpoint, we should be looking for UHD Alliance uh, supported yeah. uh, uh, signage on products or discussions about products. But uh, next year is the big year for UHD. Yeah, right? it should be. Yeah, we, we, we think so. I mean, we've already announced that all of our uh, new release st titles starting earlier this year will be uh, uh, released in UHD and HDR. Uh, so we're, we're, we're churning them out. So uh, I think by the end of the year, we're going to have more <coughs> than a dozen movies available, all, uh, all new release titles. Um, we're also looking into what to do with our catalog. And I, I know that the other studios are doing similar things. So I think there's going to be a lot of content next year. Um, if all goes well, uh, Ultra HD Blu-ray is going to launch by the end of this year. Um, the Ultra HD Alliance uh, certification program is going to launch no later than CES. So yeah, you're right, 2016 is going to be the year. So if you're UHD. thinking of buying electronics, keep your eyes posted for UHD. Uh, th that's right. And come to CES or come to IFA in Berlin in September and you'll see it there. Yeah. Uh, come back and tell us how it's going. But Absolutely. thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. All Thanks. Right. The Close Up is produced by the Advanced Imaging Society in Hollywood and powered by Barcode.